to see VAR, gave him the uh, the green light for his, his second as well. And the other brace uh, scorer on the night, Gareth Bale. I mean, perfect night, really, for Tottenham fans, especially with those two scoring the goals. And they're right back in this top four hunt, aren't they, Tottenham, with three wins in a row? They yeah, are, yeah, of course, yeah. You know, they went, did they go, f I don't think they won five out of six games or something, which was a terrible run they were on. But as you said, they've won these last three games. And do you know what? One point, they look like they're enjoying the football, um, which has not been something you associate with Josie and, and, and Spurs for most of this season. And their attacking players are exciting. You know, Kane, Bale, Son, um, Mora. And Bale coming into form just at the right time, I think. You know, he's building his fitness up, as he, as he said before the, need, he, before the game, he needs to do that. But we, we all know the quality he's got. He's done at a big club like Madrid. So, you know, having him, keeping him fit is vital now to the end of the season to, to see if they can get into that top four. OK, another big night then. Four Spurs and four games down on this Super Sunday. That began with a point apiece and a nil-nil draw between West Brom and Newcastle. A huge win for Fulham at Anfield in terms of the bottom, which we'll show you in the moment. But six consecutive Premier League home defeats for the champions, Liverpool. Manchester City, after 21 uh, wins in a row in all competitions, losing the Manchester derby for the fourth time in five seasons at home to United and Spurs with four goals and three points to beat Crystal Palace. Two very important games to come your way on Monday. Carlo Ancelotti back at the bridge with Everton to face fourth place Chelsea. West Ham, who are now level on points with Spurs, welcome Leeds. And the bonus game for you on Wednesday, City's response will be at home to Southampton that earlier kickoff time on Wednesday evening. So United went back to... Well done, I know. Um, massively, I think. Um, that's why I come here. The, the attacking players we have is amazing. Not just the ones who play tonight, but, but the other ones on the bench. And, um, yeah, we're all pushing each other. And, uh, yeah, nice to get the three points again. I mean, it is something. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, fighting for places. So, um, yeah, you have to stay on your toes. You have to, to keep working hard. And, um, yeah, we're in a good moment now, getting the confidence back. And hopefully we can keep it going. Both. An incredible striker showed again tonight and uh, he's been so consistent um, so yeah obviously a fantastic performance again from him and uh, yeah lucky to have him here he's certainly he's fine um, obviously uh, every all of us want to score but we all know the most important thing is we, we score for the team to help the team to, to get three points and, and we keep moving on um, yeah it takes a bit of time sometimes but yeah I, I'm experienced enough to be to be patient and um, yeah it, it is what it is um, I think a bit of both, but yeah, you have to feel good and, and you have to feel good to then to take your opportunity. So um, yeah, it's uh, football's a strange thing. You, you can go through bad form, good form. So uh, yeah, it's just about being patient and, and when you get your chance, trying to take it. I will tell, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not 21 anymore. So um, yeah, it is what it is. I'm just going to keep working hard every game, take each game as it comes and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Of course, your, your body changes over time. You haven't got that kind of youth, youthfulness where you can recover quickly, keep going sprinting for 90 minutes so uh, yeah you, you learn your body as you get older and um, that's what I'm having to do it's, it, we obviously knew we went through a bad moment but um, we're an experienced enough team to, to, to be patient to keep working hard and um, yeah I think we, we've, we're building on our confidence still we're, we're playing a lot better and um, hopefully we can keep continuing to, to put in good performances Six, he says he's not 21 and anymore most important thing Paul I guess is not to retire too early <laughs> yeah if a few people have made that mistake before Steve yeah <laughs> But in all seriousness, he's, he, he's got six in six. How different does Tottenham look when he's with Son and Kane? Yeah, they do. They look a different team. The, the threats they've got going in them forward areas as good as anything in the league, really. It's just behind them that's probably the problem. But you know, if you keep him fit, as I said before, the quality he's shown throughout his career at Real Madrid, OK, he's been quiet the last couple of years, hasn't played a lot of games, hasn't played a lot of football. But he's looking fit, he's looking sharp, and it's not just his goals, it's the quality he brings as well. A great left foot, switches a play at times. He's brilliant and he's, he's got a lot of confidence. And look, I, I think if Tottenham are going to finish in the top four, he's going to have a big part to play and he's got to try and stay fit. Well, he had a big part to play in the second half, didn't he? Very early on, having um, helped. And most definitely, I think, like, like Paul said, the quality he has here to, cut, to play around the corner and then come inside. And it, it, he still manages to see the far post. And, He's passed the ball and he's obviously followed his run like tall. He doesn't get it. And as you're told, if you don't get it the first run, to try and make another one. And, and that's basically what he's done. Yeah, this is great. For, forward passing to start with and follows his ball. Similar to a, a goal that they scored against Fulham the other day. But I'm really interested in this type of 
this type of area. You see, just takes a little look at Kane, and what he's doing is he's waiting for his main man to make his move. Is he going to go near post? Is he going to go far? Kane makes that peel-off run. And I just want you to track then Gareth Bale, because a lot of people switch off in this situation. Once the ball comes in, Bale points to the near post. He's going to go near post. But instead of when the ball comes over, it's all really important as an attacking player to think, right, where's this next one going to come? It's gone over my head. Don't switch off. Now get yourself in a different position. And the timing of this run now, he can see he's two, three yards behind Kiyati, but he times it absolutely perfectly for when Kane nods it back across. And when we just see it, it looks easy. It's a great time of the run. And don't underestimate how brave he is there. He could get a, a, a head flying in his face as he scores this, but that doesn't matter. It's all about trying to get a goal. So bravery, timing of runs, direction, you know, very direct play. He's always been a direct player, but I was really, really impressed with that goal. OK, so Harry Kane had assisted. It wasn't going to be long before he got himself in the headlines, but wow. How did he get himself in the headlines? It was. It was a, a wow moment. And, um, you know, again, he's, he's dropping deep like we've, we've seen a lot this season. Um, and then he follows his pass. And I thought that the fullback, Dotty, actually hit it too hard at him. I thought, you know, this was... Uh, this is, he might need a touch here, but he takes it first time, Scalzi. But you mentioned he probably needed to hit it hard to him, otherwise he would have got an interception. Yeah, the midfield player there would have intercepted. I think he does feel like he has hit it a little bit too hard. But then the rest, that technique's absolutely brilliant. I don't know what angle, if we'll see that again. But watch the midfield player of Crystal Palace as well. That's disappointing. He should really be trying to block the ball. He should try to make himself as big as possible. But unfortunately, he's on the half turn, makes himself self half the size. And, look, I'm not saying he might have stopped it. I don't want to take anything away from the, from the goal and the technique of Harry Kane, but I'd be also disappointed with my, with my midfield player there. As soon as the goal went in as well, Sean shouted. That's, uh, that's a similar <laughs> one to, uh, to Bruno Fernandes, a couple well, of... We'll have a look at that of... moment. What, from a striker's point of view, Michael, here, yeah. what's, how does he see that picture? What's going through his mind? Well, the first thing he's thinking is, I'm going to shoot. He knows he's going to shoot as, as yeah. you know, the fullback uh, Doherty has got the ball. So he knows he's going to do it. But then as soon as he hits it back hard, I mean, I've, I've seen before him thinking, oh, and take a touch because it's just, it makes a really difficult finish. <sighs> you, you, there's only one area he can score, and that's in the far post. But the problem is when you're right-footed, your natural uh, shape is right to left. So it obviously goes much closer to the goalkeeper. So you've got to be so precise in the finish to go to that far corner. We've seen the likes of Beckham do it over the years. We'll see Fernandes uh, in a moment. Really, really difficult finish, especially when the ball's coming to you. Sean, you have a couple of different um, sort of scenarios though, why you think this is an even harder one. Um, yeah, I think this one's um, a, a bit harder only because he has to generate the power and the dip himself. I think with Harry Kane, he can almost use the power of it coming to get to force the whip and dip because that's the only option he really has when that ball comes back is to go that side. Yeah. I mean, my theory on it is, is you know, and listen, every, every goal is, is different in terms of I might find something easier than one person, but then again, on a different finish, I might find really difficult and these guys make it up, find it hard. I think when a ball's coming to you at that pace, to hit it into the far corner is much harder than the ball rolling away from you because I think it's, virtually, it's so difficult to keep it down when the ball's coming. I mean, Skulls, you, you probably scored more goals than both of us outside. <laughs> Which would you have preferred there? Which do you find easiest? Well, I, I was never really good at any of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even this one. Well, what, I, what I would say, I, I, think it's, I think it's a little bit easier from that side because I don't think you're thinking about it in the top corner. I think the only thing you're thinking about from there is getting it on target and possibly aiming for the goalkeeper. I, I think that's the best way to visualise it because... Anything online with the keeper, he's always bending away from the goalkeeper. It's always going into that, into, into that far post, which Harry Kane's done there. The one with Fernandez, as, as Sean said, the thing he had to get, he had to get dip on it. So whip and dip, he didn't need to do that. Which, ah, look, they're both brilliant goals. Um, can you choose? You're one? the casting vote here. Which was <laughs> the hardest? <laughs> Michael says Harry Kane's I harder. Sean says Bruno's harder. So I, I think Bruno's is harder. Right. Yes! <laughs> They're ganging up on They're ganging up. But they scored more goals from outside the box. <laughs> I'll leave it to them. You scored four times as many inside the box, so that's all right. Uh, so that was 3-1, and he got his header for 4-1. Quick check on the VAR. 
Um, yeah, he, he, he deserved it. He, he played well, he created, he caused all sorts of problems. And it was, it was nice for that to come back to have the goal. And it was great play all around from Spurs for me. Um, they were stretching the game. Um, Lucas Moura does well, particularly for me. And it, it makes space for everyone. But what a great ball from Sun backwards. And Kane, as you know, is in the right place at the right time. Yeah. I mentioned something before, Steve, in terms of making an air post run before it was Gareth Bale. This mm. time, it's Harry Kane. Watch. I mean, exactly the same reaction. You don't get the first one when we roll it on here. Kane makes that near post run, and all of a sudden, if he switches off for one more minute and takes one lazy stride, oh, it's not coming to me, then he's offside. We saw how close it was on VAR. But watch, as soon as he sees it goes over his head, he turns and boom, he's in the game again. Look at that. He's, he's aware that, you know, the ball hasn't even gone past him, really. It's still in the air, it's going over, and he turns on a sixpence and boom, he stays onside and he's got an easy finish in the end. But both goals very similar in terms of Bale and Kane. Not daydreaming. When the ball goes away from you, you think, oh, it's not, this is not my chance. But it can be. You just get back in and get back into, uh, into the game in a different way. Always be alert. Is that exactly. your message? That's the one. OK, so that takes Harry Kane individually uh, to one behind Mo Salah. Um, but to look at that with uh, assists and goals. Uh, there he is, uh, out in front. And uh, incidentally as well, uh, Hung Min Son and Harry Kane have broken Alan Shearer and Chris Sutton's record for Premier League assists in one season. They had a bit of a dry spell, but over the season, and Gareth Bale's getting involved as well. They have been quite recently. We, me and Scholes, we were talking before about Son's probably gone, gone quite quiet in the last couple of months. But yeah. to beat that, that's a long record. Sutton and Shearer in our day, that was. It was, yeah. No, You're yeah, a bit yeah, younger than us. Sure, <laughs> you don't mean. Sure sure um, yeah, no, a great record. And, you know, just thinking of Harry Kane, he, he's hard to, it's difficult to compare him to centre forward, other centre forwards around Europe or the world. Because I, I've never seen a centre forward that makes so many goals for other people. It's, it's almost like it's a stroke between a number nine and number ten. And is he doing that more this season under Mourinho? More than I've ever seen. Um, his record, as it, as it shows, it, 40, 40 goals yeah. and, and assists in one season. But he knows where people are. He's got the, the cleverness to see people around him that sometimes are in better positions and sometimes they aren't. But do you think, oh, we just heard Gareth Bale a minute ago saying your body changes, you've got to... Do you think he's playing in that sort of ten role because of that? Or do you think... It's just developed, that's what he wants to do. Yeah, I, I'm not sure it's because of that, because I've never seen him as an out-and-out -out number nine anyway, because he's never been... I don't think pace is his strength, is it? No. He's great finishes, scores great goals from outside the box, which not many centre-forwards do, do they, really? You know, sharp centre-forwards like yourself, you run away, you threw on goal, you little sniffing goals, you know, in and around the six-yard box. He's not that type of player. He can score every type of goal, I think, but... His assist record and the way he brings other people into, people into the game, he has to do that because he doesn't have that lightning pace that gets him away from people. John, where do you stand on him and Europe's other strikers at the moment? Um, he's definitely up there, but he's up there with some of the greats. Um, as we were saying while the game was going on, I think Lewandowski should get the, the jump for me as being the top guy because he just does it everywhere he goes, pretty much every team, every level. He's always scoring, but... I'd, with Kane's assists, he's rubbing shoulders with a lot of people, I think, for me, personally. Well, both he and Gareth Bale have played a big part today in Jose Mourinho and Tottenham's charge.